Hello guys, my name is Ari Barshit and welcome to today's workshop. In this workshop, we will be making an Arduino powered robot car with Bluetooth capabilities. So you will see how a robot car can be controlled using your phone via your wireless connection. This workshop will include the assembly of the car along with detailed coding for the car. Moreover, it will include a step-by-step -step procedure on how to connect your phone to the Bluetooth module. So let's get started. Okay, so I will give you a brief on what the assembly is. So, so assembly is it's basically a smart lab based out of N5 since uh, December 2014. We have done over 250 free workshops um, for, uh, for tech enthusiasts and people of all ages uh, who are interested in learning about new innovative things. Uh, we run three types of workshops, uh, which are mentioned here. Uh, it's hack code and data science. So hack is about embedded systems, IoT, hardware. Uh, then there's code workshops which include software projects like API, framework and apps and, and applications. Uh, finally there's uh, data science workshops which, uh, which are about advanced topics uh, related to artificial intelligence and machine learning. So this workshop you can say is a combination of uh, hack and code as it includes both hardware and software. Um, so our tar target audience are mainly students, professionals and entrepreneurs or basically anyone who wants to learn about uh, technology or innovative things. Our focus is on smart technology and its practical applications. So you can also visit our forum on members.assembly.ae. We are also very active on social media. So you can find us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook to stay up to date with our latest workshops. So what will you learn in this workshop? You will so you will basically learn how to design and assemble a robot car using um, 3D printing chases and other parts. You will learn how to work with different components such as Arduino Uno board, expansion board, and a Bluetooth module. You will learn. You will also learn how uh, how wireless control is initiated and what connections are to be made to uh, the uh, to each board uh, and how the motors are connected and all of that and finally you will also gain experience with Arduino coding so this is the this is the robot car that we're gonna that we're gonna make so it's gonna use uh, ESP8266 expansion board uh, to enable wireless connections such as Wi-Fi and Bluetooth module uh, and Bluetooth module can also be put inside so you can control the car through Wi-Fi and Bluetooth using this board so now I'm going to talk about the hardware required uh, for building this car <clears throat> so first of all you need an Arduino Uno board uh, so it's uh, it's the best board to get started with uh, when you're like when you're new to coding and uh, electronics. So if this is your first experience uh, tinkering with the platform, the Uno is the most robust board you can start playing with. Then you have uh, four DC motors uh, to enable movement such as forward, backward, left, right. It can also spin. So. Uh, then motor driver shield obviously to control the motors separately and like it controls each motor individually then um, as you can as you can see in the picture uh, we also use ultrasonic sensor and servo motor but that's for a different uh, different uh, purpose uh, it's for obstacle avoidance which we will cover in, in future workshops for as for this uh, we're gonna use buzzer to generate sounds um, when, whenever there's an alarm that the system wants to give to the to to you, basically, we're gonna use 3.7 volts lithium polymer batteries. So these will be used to power the Arduino and the DC motor driver. Uh, the car requires at least uh, 7.2 voltages supplied to it uh, because it has to run the motor driver as well as Arduino. 
So if, if it's less than that, then the car will not work as desired. And these lithium polymer batteries are very powerful as they have four times more energy of a normal battery and they're also rechargeable making them very suitable for, for this car. Then we have the power connector which will which will be connected to the Arduino but it will be it will be connected to the power supply as well as the motor driver shield to power both of them through the batteries. Then you will need obviously you will need the ESP8266 expansion board. In this board, um, this board is used to configure Wi-Fi parameters and serial port um, parameters based on web server. Can be used as a standalone uh, ASP8266 development board and can be used as a standalone Arduino expansion board with all the pins. And then we're going to use Bluetooth module. So this module will be used uh, will be used to enable Bluetooth control of the phone of the car through your phone. Then obviously you'll need jumper wires to make all the connections to the expansion board uh, and the driver. Then you will need robot chases, so you can either 3D print them or you can purchase them online. You just it's basically just to put all the components together into one so that they function in one. <coughs> and finally you will need four wheels to enable movement. So so the uh, so this uh, this slide shows the installing uh, so it shows how the motors are going to be connected to the motor driver and how the Arduino and a motor uh, and motor driver are going to be connected to the power supply. So as you can see, the mo the four uh, the four DC geared, geared motors are going to be connected um, up on the opposite direction on each side, and then they're going to be connected to. K1, K2, K3, K4. So they're all uh, placed where the motor, like if it's on the right side, then you place it, and if it's in the bottom right side, then you place it on that specific pin. So, but it, you can change it in code in the code as well. And then there is, and then for the power supply, you need to connect the positive uh, with the positive and the negative with the negative, and then. Uh, connected to the Arduino board, so it's gonna power both of them at the same time. Just make sure the voltage is 7.2 because it causes a lot of problems. <clears throat> so this is how. So this slide, um, this slide shows the installation of uh, the expansion board on Arduino Uno board. So <clears throat> the expansion board will, fill, will fit perfectly on top of the Arduino board, as can be seen in the pictures. The connection can be made to the expansion board rather than to the Arduino board. So it, the connections are all going to be made in the pins provided on the expansion board. Now we're going to talk. Well, now we're going to look at the assembly and circuit setup of the ESP8266 expansion board and Bluetooth module on Uno board. So, in this in this slide, you can just try just ignore the uh, ultrasonic module and the servo, and we're going to be focusing on the Bluetooth uh, module, buzzer module, and how the connection I made between the motor driver and the expansion board. So I'm going to talk about the pins on the motor driver. So there is VCC pin which supplies the power for the motor. There is a ground pin, uh, which is a common ground pin. A uh, 5 volt pin supplies power for switching uh, logic circuitry inside the motor driver IC. Then there are enable pins, input 1, 2, 3, 4, and enable B. So basically what that does is enable 1 pins are used to control the speed of the front motors. Um, pulling, if you put this on high, uh, it will make the, motors, the front motor spin. Putting putting it on low will make the motor stop. Enable uh, input one and two pins are used to control spinning directions of front motors. Uh, when one of them is high and the other is low, uh, the front motors will spin. If both the inputs are either high or low, the motors will stop. And it's the opposite for input three and four. So basically, if input three uh, and four pins are used. Uh, are high and the other is low, the motor, the rear motors will spin this time. And if they are both both high or both low, then it will stop. So enable B pins 
Uh, and finally, enable beepons are used to control the rear motors. Pulling, uh, pulling this high will make the motor spin, pulling it low will make the motor stop. Removing the jumper and connecting this pin to PWM input will let us control the speed of the rear motors as well. Now, these are the software requirements. Um, so, when you're uploading the code, to the board, the code we will talk about uh, in the next few slides. Um, so make sure that you uh, turn the that you take off the Bluetooth module before uploading the code because if you put it in, they are both controlled through the same USART UART port. So it will not upload the code properly. It will show um, unsuccessful upload uh, error. So you you should take the IC off and once you once a code has been uploaded then you put back the Bluetooth module and then Bluetooth will work so the expansion board has uh, has a switch so it's either on O N, or there's like one two at the bottom so it depends what you want to use if you want to control it through Wi-Fi just uh, put it on uh, O N, and if you want to use Bluetooth then just put it on one two then, so we'll provide you with the, li uh, with the link to the code uh, in the description below, so just check it out. Then uh, you have to connect to Arduino uh, Uno, you have to connect your Arduino Uno to your PC, and then open Arduino IDE application. Click File, Open, and then choose the, choose the code. Uh, it's with INO extension, so it's going to open an IDE, uh, and then load the code into Arduino. Now we're going to talk about how you're going to install the application. So go to this link shown in the slide. Uh, it's also going to be mentioned in the description. So once you go to that link, you're going to download this application. This is the icon, as you can see in the picture. So uh, you have to get that app on your Android phone. For iPhones, if you're using an iPhone, we're going to give you another link, which will also be in the description. Um, just uh, for iPhone, it's a different application, so it's the same procedure, but but different different applications. So you can just it's really easy. Then, <clears throat> so for Android, you go to your Bluetooth settings and then you search for devices. You're gonna so you're gonna find HC02. So just uh, select that, and then it's gonna ask you for a pin. So the pin would either be one two three four or are uh, zero 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 so just try any one of them and uh, usually one two three four works so just once it's once it has been paired then open the application that you installed previously and then it's going to give you an option to uh, option to select Wi-Fi or Bluetooth so Wi-Fi the, all the connections made and uh, they will enable your car to be controlled through Wi-Fi as well but we will talk about that in the next workshop workshop but in, in future workshop but for now we're going to focus on how to control it through Bluetooth so when you select Bluetooth you're going to get the screen on the right on the the last the last picture on the right you're going to see uh, these options of uh, front back left right and you can pause or uh, resume the movements <coughs> so there are options such as connect modify obstacle and tracking Obstacle and tracking are going to be uh, are also going to be discussed in future workshops. Uh, for now, it's just uh, manually uh, uh, wirelessly controlling the car. So once once you get that screen, just go to connect. You're gonna get more options. Uh, you're gonna get like a few options. So just select for uh, just look for HC02, and then um, uh, once uh, and then once it has been paired, it's gonna show connected on top. So after that. Uh, once it has been connected, when you try to press the forward button, the car will start going forward and backward. If you press back, then it's going to go back, left, right, and you can um, then. This application also has other features such as obstacle. If you press obstacle, then the car will likely install an ultrasonic sensor and uh, the servo motor. So um, it does have um, obstacle avoidance capabilities, but. Um, so if you press that through the application, the car will automatically start to move and you can modify the settings such as how much distance there should be before it changes direction and stuff. So yeah, that's the process. Uh, the application saves all the movements that you have made 
So now we're going to talk about the code structure. So this is a code. Um, it's called wireless, and this is a config for configuration for it. So let's just um, go through this first. So all the pins and the connections that are going to be made, they're all uh, basically put inside this uh, this file called con uh, configuration.edge. So these are all the file types and all the variable names and initial values. And it, it also has all the pins connected to it, like the, the pin where each um, uh, each pin is connected in the in the expansion board. So these are all initializations. And this entire file has been in, uh, included into the main uh, the main code. So we you should ignore the observable because like we're not gonna talk about it in this anyways. Um so we're we're gonna start with the motor control. So this is uh the code go advance, which means the car will go forward. So since the motors are connected in the opposite direction, uh so uh, pin L when pin L and um when pin uh when the IR1 and, uh, on the left side and 2, pin, pin 1 and 2 on the left side are high and low. Uh, so basically, uh, if the car is going forward, then one of the pin will be high on the left and the other one will be high on the right. Meaning the rear two are going to be high and it will go forward. And if you want to turn left, then again, the same, the same uh, arrangement. Um, we can just uh, change this from you can turn this, make this high, make this low, low and high. So it will turn left. Same thing for right, just opposite of left. So this is just the basic for reverse, just opposite of forward. The pins, everything is going to stay the same. So digital right is basically used to give a pin a lower or high value. So a digital pin, a lower or high value. Then we have this function which takes in the speed of the left and right as input then it, uh, it assigns a value, uh, analog value to the pins and then this function is used to turn the buzzer on so it, said it writes uh, a value to the digital pin and gives it a low value that means the buzzer will go on and if the buzzer will go off it gives it a high value so that's pretty straightforward. Then there's alarm. If if basically the buzzer, if you want it, if the buzzer is going to turn on, then this function will be will, will be called alarm, and the buzzer will go on for uh, with a delay of hundred seconds, and then it's going to turn off automatically. This is the this is the part of the code where Bluetooth um, is uh, where Bluetooth is enabled through serial. Uh, connection. So this is the general code for the thing, for the for the Bluetooth connection. And you can just it's it uses a buffer and when when basically the code has been modified through your app, it changes um, it sends it to it it, send, it gives you a message that you have modified the parameters and so basically you can you can change parameters such as um, distance limit, side distance limit, turn time. All of these parameters can be changed to the app, and um, and so once once uh, the app has been used to um, change the parameters, then um, or give it a command basically. If if the if you press the forward button on the app. Then, for example, in this one, uh, serial control instructions are uh, if you press forward, um, then the car will go advance, as we saw the first function, which is this one, it goes forward. And, and the same thing for turn left, when you, when you press the left button, then it, goes, uh, it, it uh, calls the go left function. And then turn right calls go right, go back calls go back stop button stops the movement of the car and the buzzer is off and the option like there are two more options in the application which are avoid obstacles and line follow 
So if you press avoid obstacle, then um, so basically uh, it, uh, it starts to drive automatically. Uh, using the ultrasonic sensor, it avoids the optic obstacles, and for line follow, it uses the tracking sensors to basically follow a line. And then this is the car motor control. So if drive status is manual drive, then for, like if you use the f arrows to control the car, then these are the separate uh, cases, switch and cases. So for each case, for case of go advance when the car is going forward, you can all of these variables are by the way they are all um, uh, described over here. For example, um, uh, jog, uh, jog flag time count and uh, uh, jog time. All of these variables have been uh, have been initialized over here and. So for go advance, we can change the motor speed and these flags. Um, if it's true, then it will go forward. And the same thing for go left, we can change the speed, and all of these things can be changed from this part of the code. Back and stop. And then to keep the car running for uh, 100 milliseconds, you just call this. You just use you just set jog time as more than or equal to hundred, and yep. This if there is this stop flag is false, then the code will keep on go to the next. So this uh, if the car is on the line following, then auto tracking will be called. And auto tra tracking is basically this one. It will call this uh, this uh, this code, and for avoidance, it will call this code. But these two codes will be discussed in uh, future workshops when we actually make the car uh, which which avoid obstacles and follows a line. For this one, it's just manual control of the car through Bluetooth. So. Yeah, this is just the general setup. So pin mode, it, it basically allocates, uh, it decides whether you know a pin is uh, output or an input. So all these pins are are uh, kept as output, and the trig and echo pin from the. So we're not going to use ultrasonic sensor. So these two pins. Um, so basically, these two pins are for ultrasonic sensor. This is for the buzzer. Um, uh, it will go off basically its output so and then line following sensors uh, when we make when we make the car we're going to use five sensors so these are all the five sensors which are input which sends the data to the Arduino and then it processes it and yeah that's it this is the loop it just calls the function do you RT and tick so all the all the variables that are described in this code have been initialized in this code so for example <laughs> a definition of the motor driver uh, is over here so it uh, pin 2 D D I R L pin uh, uh, 1 pin L is connected to pin 2 which controls the motor direction and this is uh, connected to pin 4 and this controls the speed of the motor which is connected to pin 6 and then all these variables have been used in main code so that's why we have uh, included configure.h and for the line line following sensor we will not go through this because it's for future workshop servo pin also for future workshop echo pin as well for bu buzzer has been connected to pin number 13 and this is the back speed and track speed all of these uh, variables have been initialized for this is the default speed that has been set and these are other variables uh, which we used um, for for this part of the code when we actually when, when we modify the code through the app and it, when it changes so it has all been initialized aware this has been distance limit has been given uh, has been set as 30 initially 
side distance and main has been set as 30 so these all uh, values can be changed through the app and then yeah so these are all the variables we talked about these and yep that's all this is auto drive line following manual drive we focused on this basically today all right so now we're gonna start assembling the robot car so I already have the chases, which can be 3D printed. Um, I installed the four DC motors and the DC motor driver shield. It, uh, it basically controls all the four motors separately. And I have the Arduino board installed. So let's go step by step. So the DC motors, um, they have been installed uh, on the opposite direction so that the, the tires would go, suppose like this one would go over here. Now we will make the connections. So all four of them, they will go inside these K1, K2, K3, and K4 in the motor driver shield. <coughs> Each corresponding to, like this one would go over here. The diagram is given in the presentation, so you can just review that. So once this is done, Now we will connect the power power cable to the Arduino. Arduino is connected on the upper chases because it's going to be easier to upload the code. Um, so this cable will just stay inside inside Arduino. This will later be used to power the board and the driver. We have to connect. Um, we have to connect this to to the ground of the motor driver. And that's um, now we will make some connections between the motor driver and the Arduino for which we will okay, cut this part. Now we will install the servo into the upper chases with Arduino. Uh, I have already 3D printed this part so that it fits well with the chases. We're going to use the screws to tighten it up. Uh, 
All right, so once the servo motor is in place, now we're gonna install the ultrasonic sensor on top of it. And I've also, there's, I've also printed another case for the ultrasonic sensor, which can, so that it can be easily mounted onto the servo motor. Um, but you have to align this later on, but for now, we're just gonna put it in place. make sure it's straight Okay, now we're gonna make the connections for the Bluetooth capabilities. So we're gonna use ESP8266 expansion board for enabling Wi-Fi and Bluetooth control through your phone. So you can manually control the car or you could, you could enable <clears throat> options such as obstacle avoidance This is in place. Now, now we're going to make some connections between the motor driver and the expansion board. Now you're going to need some jumper wire, uh, jumper cables. So there are there's enable one input one two three four and then E and B. So now I'm going to tell you the connections and on the expansion board there are different numbers. Okay, now we're we're going to install the buzzer next to the servo and the ultrasonic sensor. Just make sure you use the wash you use a washer for the Arduino board and buzzer and these kind of circuits just to keep them safe. Okay, now we're going to make some connections between the expansion board and the motor driver. So this is the upper traces, so just make sure whatever connection you make, it goes through, through the, through, it goes like through, um, uh, doesn't, uh, stop the tires from spinning or something just make sure the connections are neat so there are there's enable one input one two three four and e and b and they will be on this board so now i'm going to make connections from there to the expansion board which has um different numbers which is connected on top of the arduino board so So let's start with enable B. So it's be like this. So you will connect enable B from the motor driver to it's supposed to be like this. So just make sure you bring it out from the correct side. 
and it's going to go to number six of the expansion board. Number six. Then input four is going to be connections are going to be a little messy, so just it's going to go through here, and then this is going to go to number eight on the expansion board. Number eight is here. Then we're going to have input three. We'll go to number seven. Input three. Go to number seven. Okay, then input two will go to number four, and five will go to number two. Number four, input two to number four, two, three, four, and then. Input one to number five. Just to have a closer look. And then this is going to go to number um, number two. Okay, so now there's enable one left. So that would be the last one in that row, which will go to number five which is here. Okay, now from 2 to 8, all of them are um, taken except number 3, so we're going to use that for... Okay, now we're going to make the connections for... for for the ground, 5 volt, 12 volt, these pins on the motor driver. We're going to connect them to the expansion board. All right, so, <clears throat> so we're going to connect the servo motor, which we install over here in the upper chases. So the orange is um, the signal red is VCC and brown is ground. So you're going to connect ground to ground, which is brown, and then red to VCC and S is. Yes, so these are the connections <clears throat> for the servo. Now we're going to connect ultrasonic and the buzzer module to the expansion board. So we're going to need female to female jumper wires again. <clears throat> so the VCC will be connected to Five volts, 
VCC of the ultrasonic sensor. VCC is the first pin on the left. It's going to be connected to 5 volts where <clears throat> then the trig pin the trigger pin will be connected to number 12 of this um, of the first row Then the echo pin will be connected to number 11 of first row. Eleven. And the ground will be connected to ground which is the last row in the in this section. So that's that's the ground. This is uh, five volts, and these are the pins. Now we will connect the <clears throat> the buzzer module. So the VCC of the buzzer will go to the 3.3 uh, volts which is this line you can see and then input output will go to number 13 number 13 is the last one over here on the corner And finally, the ground will be connected to the ground will be connected to the ground over here. So now, finally, we're going to install the Bluetooth module onto the expansion board to enable Bluetooth capabilities. So as you can see, um, the the pins have been labeled VCC, ground, TXD, and RXD. So we're going to put uh, put these pins, uh, the Bluetooth module in U, uh, UART port so just the middle four pins are going to go inside so for example VCC uh, VCC ground TXD and RXD you, you ignore state and key so just put the four middle pins inside so VCC goes into 5 volts um, ground goes into ground TXD goes to RX and RXD goes to TX pin so now all the connections have been made. We just have to connect <coughs> the power, the power to the uh, the power to the Arduino with the to the motor driver. So it goes in this pin over here. This one. So it's going to be like. So that's it. Now you're just gonna now you're just gonna have to screw all the the upper chases onto the bottom chases using screws. I have used these spacers to so there's a screw at the at the bottom at the bottom end and then now you're just gonna screw it from the top end. Alright, so there's one more connection which is going from the signal over here on the motor driver signal to it's going to number nine 
Yes, number nine on the expansion board. Over, over here. Okay. All right, so, <clears throat> so that's it for the assembly part of the workshop. So before, I'd like to mention before you upload the code, uh, you have to take take the Bluetooth module off because the code won't upload properly as they work together, I think. Yeah. Anyways, just take this off when you're uploading the code and then put it uh, later on. This is the application that you need to install to control the car via through Bluetooth. So it's called Car. The link will be in the description, so just uh, download it on your Android phone. For iPhone, there's going to be another link, so just check it out. Okay, so when you open the app, you're going to get an option of Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. So just um, select Bluetooth and then go to Connect. Now, there are going to be many options. So just uh, select HC02 and then it's going to say Connected. And now, when you press Forward, it's going to come forward. So that's, I was standing in front of the car, sorry. So when you press forward, it's gonna go forward, and then when you go press backward, it's gonna come back. And then it's also gonna go left, right, and then... All right, so the same application can be used to change the mode of the car, for example, into obstacle avoidance. So all you have to do is press obstacle, and then it's gonna measure the distance of the object in front of it and then change its direction accordingly. So it just uh, went outside without uh, breaking the walls apart. So we will show you how to make uh, this obstacle avoidance robot in a future workshop. So that's all for today. So thank you all for watching. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up and also subscribe to our YouTube channel if you want to learn about more cool stuff in the future. And um, that's it for today. I uh, hope to see you again next week. Thank you.